When writing multiplayer scripts, your code must explicitly account for the fact that there can now be several players in the same session. In version 2 of the API, all player-related functions now take one additional argument to specify which player to consider. For example, getPlayerHealth used to take no arguments, but for multiplayer, you can provide a player ID as first argument to specify for which player you want to retrieve the health. The player ID is a unique number that is guaranteed to remain constant for a certain player even if other players join or leave. Let's create a simple example with a jump pad that will throw players up in the air when standing on it. In the editor, we create a box and complement that with a tagged trigger volume. Normally, we would check every frame if the player is inside the trigger by first getting the player transform and then check if the position is inside the trigger. But since there can now be multiple players, we have to do this for each one of them. Iterating over players in the current session is a very frequent operation in multiplayer scripting. An array of player IDs can be retrieved with the getAllPlayers function, but we also provide a custom Lua iterator that we recommend using in most situations, and that's also what we'll use here. First we make sure to include player.lua, located in the script include folder. Now we can use the player iterator to loop over players in the session. We provide the player ID to the getPlayerTransform function so that it knows for which player to return the transform. Players inside the trigger volume will get a slight push upwards by setting the Y component of the player velocity. Note that the player ID is provided also to the get player velocity and the set player velocity functions. This way of iterating over players will dynamically adjust even if the player count changes. If we run this in an actual multiplayer session with two players and a third player joins, the script will automatically iterate over three players instead of two. As long as you use this iterator every time you want to do something for all players, you usually don't need to do anything special to support players joining and leaving. In the next part of this series, we'll talk about how to handle input when there are multiple players.